everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ada, your online therapist. How are you doing? I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I did myself. So good to be back. So guys, this week I want to talk about something really, really sensitive. I know I say that a lot about my topics, but hey, therapy is a sensitive topic. So everything around therapy or the science of the mind has to be taken very, very sensitively and cautiously. You don't want to rush into ideas, take everything with a grain of salt, and please understand why I call this nuanced therapy. It means you have to apply it as it affects you, as is applicable to you, okay? Disclaimer, guys. So today, I wanted to talk about this. It's like an odd idea, but after reading or listening, reading, listening, to David M. Buss's The Evolution of Idea. I thought I'd discuss some very key pointers with you. So I titled my topic, Marriage, Choosing a Mate, What's All the Fuss, Right? Hmm, where well, it's pretty interesting how we go about choosing mates for a long-term partnership or lifetime, lifetime um, company. It's more than just a, um, a feeling or an idea. This is part of our evolutionary um, survival mechanisms. The idea of the continuity of the species. And while we call it marriage, uh, primate um, families or mammalian um, extensions do this also for the protection and continuity of the species. Now, the way animals or primates to which we are, we have been scientifically um, closely linked is somewhat, it's kind of ancient in some ways or basic. Let me use the word basic. Primate style of choosing mate is kind of basic. Female is in heat, for example, with the primates, baboons, chimpanzees, estrus, and the males go all out and get the females. Usually there's a dominant male who probably holds 75% of the females. And the younger males or teenage males who just scout for lone females or, you know, just hit and run, as it were. So, when it comes to our primate um, extensions. It's female in heat, dominant male mates, procreates, and they have babies. And there's something interesting about it. It's females do not mate with any other male in the group except the dominant male. And this tells you something. It means the dominant, the gene of the dominant male is the one that is, is fortunate to be continued until he's deposed no other uh, uh, offspring of any other male and the idea of a dominant male is one who is strong is able to lead the alpha of the group this ensures that the best genes the strongest and the the strongest gene of the species continues because that's the idea behind becoming a dominant male it means you lead the pack and so procreation only happens with the strongest of the pack to ensure a very good offspring strong and well adapted offspring now when it comes to us human beings how are we really separated from our mammalian or primate um, extensions a lot of people we date you know we hang out you meet people, you like them, they like you, you decide to put a ring on it. And of course, then come the children. Is it that simple though? See, this is where we make a lot of mistakes as people. Because it's like, there's no, there's no, um, how do I put it? There's no education besides biology on how to choose a mate. So what's all the fuss? Well. It's not the same for human beings when it comes to mating, choosing a mate, and what we call marrying someone. 
For the human beings, a lot more goes into it because one, men cannot easily tell which of us females are in heat and we don't have dominant males that, you know, except for the situations of polygamy, right? Where you have one man having, I've seen an instance of a man has 82 wives. This is in Nigeria, kudos to him. And you also have older men that are still able to marry younger and beautiful um, women to the chagrin or dismay of other young men. And oftentimes people feel disgusted, oftentimes people feel um, revolted about the whole situation. But you see, when you understand where it's coming from, even for the young women who choose to go on with older men, it's not so morally or ethical, it's more evolutionary in the sense that much as there are no dominant males, there are still men who have shown that they have the qualities to provide for their offspring above the average. This is why people, um, people have given a bad name. It's like give a dog a bad name, dead dog a bad name, something like that. For in the, in the idea of mating or marriage, we are sophisticated. So we've called it marriage. But the whole idea about marriage is as basic as finding a mate for the continuity of the species. Yes, there's companionship because human, human relationships, human interaction is the longest type of um, species relationship. Other species seem to separate at a certain age and start their own families and then separate. But the human being, the human species, is known to have longer lasting relationships with their offsprings, even till death. This is why, even though it's still mating or the choosing of mates, it's more like there's marriage and then there's companionship and then there's there's childbearing, there's companionship, there's protection and all of that that we put together and call it marriage. Now, why is it marriage? What's so important? What's the fuss about marriage? Well, you see, in ancient times, not so far back actually, and you still find it in some civilizations and some societies in our current day um, uh, situation where women are betrothed to a certain um, individual or they go off and marry a man who already has one wife or they have children for late husbands, brothers. There's a whole uh, cultural undertone to marriage. Oftentimes these differences in culture often come off as shock to some people and as gross to others and not acceptable. Take Nigeria, for instance. It was mentioned a lot in this book. Yay. There's polygamy in Nigeria compared to the US where it is illegal. There's something called the customary court where you can have the traditional marriages and all that that permits a man to have more than one wife. Over here in America, it's illegal to have more than one wife. Albeit, you're free to have mistresses. In certain African cultures, in certain um, Aztec, the old, the ancient, you know, marriage wasn't entirely just for pleasure, you know, and even sex wasn't just for pleasure because you would have hunters go out. Here's the thing about the ancient exchange that go on in marriages, which is why it's important to choose a mate wisely. What's all the fuss about choosing a mate wisely? The same way um, female species of the animal kingdom do not just go about um, copulating with weak and non-alpha males, is the same reason why human females, women, don't just accept the proposition or value proposition of just any man. We as a society have set a standard of what is acceptable. 
there's a man has to have an ambition. He has to be hardworking, industrious. He has to he has to be intelligent, dependable, you know, and there needs to be compatibility, which is what we often sum up as love, being compatible with someone, because someone can be industrious, someone can be hardworking, someone can be ambitious, someone can, you know, be intelligent, but just not your type. Yes, very familiar language. So here's the thing, why the fuss? Uh, below all that fancy stuff we look for in marriage, there's an evolutionary um, function to choosing a mate. And no matter how sophisticated we want to think and be, it's just like the way we eat fast food, you know. People say, why are so many people obese? Why is there junk food so prevalent? It's because they maintain our survival nutrients, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. Your burgers, your protein shakes, your fries, get that? Still the same um, ancestor survivalist food nutrients albeit in different forms. This is what drives us to go after junk food like it's the craze. Same thing with marriage, that even though we think it's a sophisticated union, even though we consider it a modern day contraption in some places, you know, whether polygamous or monogamous marriages, the undertone, the driving force of many coupling, in this case, choosing a mate, has to do with the evolutionary choice to survive, to continue the species. And it equally follows the demands, the culturally set um, standards and value systems that go into procreation. This is why when a man loses his job, he in, oftentimes gets insulted by his wife or be rated by neighbors, you know. Poor people, poor couples often get into fights because there's an endangerment of the species in their home. Children risk um, uh, not having enough food, shelter, protection, and just take the animal kingdom for lions. If a, if a lion, an alpha, what you know king of the pack is injured or dies the offsprings he leaves behind are at risk of being killed by a new male and as much as horrific as it sounds the new male will often seek out the cubs to kill in order to force the females back into heat jungle justice huh not what you thought now, there are some ancient cultures where if the father of a chil of children, if father of a family dies, the community will kill the children because they have no protection, never mind that they have a mother. So, if we can understand the evolutionary pressure, the evolutionary um, meaning behind choosing a mate, Perhaps we can avoid some of the traps of dating, some of the disappointments and disillusionments of marriage, this union we call marriage. Imagine a man who loses his wife and kids are probably below seven. He will oftentimes marry a woman who would help him raise those children. He wouldn't go for someone too young and he wouldn't go for someone too old. Imagine a man who loses the same if same man decides to divorce his wife because his children are all in college, which happens, you know, men men um, lose interest in their wives, the wives of their youth, because, well, they now want to enjoy life and they want someone, an arm candy, someone younger, someone petite, someone trophy, as it were. Usually older men, this is why older men go for younger women, because the choice of mate is no longer for procreation or um, sustenance of the species. 
In ancient times, often, this is called mate poaching or cuckoldry, where men offer their wives gifts to ensure she stays. In modern days, marriage is legal. There's a law, there's a government binding both man and woman to remain faithful to their spouses. In a situation or event that this is broken, then there's a divorce and then there's dissolution or dissolution and divorce. So when you're out there looking for a mate, as sophisticated as you want to be and look and act, just remember, there's just one fundamental basic, there's, there's, there's this fundamental and basic idea behind choosing a mate. It's either you want someone who will help you raise children, oftentimes a man who already has children and is divorced or widowed will not often avoid women who still want to have children and women who still want to have children avoid men with kids because there's this he's too relaxed he's not going to be interested in giving me a child of my own basically so in the idea of coupling or deciding to choose a mate understanding the uh strategy the mating strategy of the person that you are going after is so important because this puts a lot of people out of sorts. You have, um, there's this dynamic where you have younger men going for older women because financially they're not stable and they cannot get the women they desire because the women they desire have put standards way up there that usually older men, well not too old, you know, but older men say above 35, 40, are able to provide because it there's this situation you know it, it's like the norm of course there are exceptions to the rule but the rule is that men eventually come into better money better income at an older age except of course now that we have professions where people younger people get paid you know however even with the money you know with the exception of feminism, where women no longer wait for just some man, you know, it's like we go at it with younger people, age mates and age range. But you understand that not everyone is able to hook up or excuse me, hook up is not what I want to do. Not everyone is able to match up with who they desire because a lot of people say, oh, there are no good men out there. There are no good women out there. There are no available men and women out there. It simply means there are no people within the standards that they would prefer. Don't forget, at the base, at the heart of mating or march, matching or marriage is someone who can help continue the species. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty, it's enlightening to know that you know a lot of people go dating as hard the one question you want to first settle within yourself is what are you looking for because this opens you up and oftentimes you could be an eight going after a ten but being pursued by six so at the end of the day you have to understand what do you have what do you, th it, women are often, this is where bride prices come from because it's believed the woman is young, she's fertile, she's beautiful, and she can raise the children. This is what makes bride price a thing. You know, it's like I've raised this beautiful daughter, you're not just going to take her away. You know, in some cultures it's different, but the idea is only a man who can afford, who can show he's capable of providing for the children and, and the daughter they can take the daughter away if it was free then even men who are drunkards men who don't have work can just come and say i'm asking for your daughter's hand in marriage so the society has raised the standard the human society has raised the standard that at least he must have job work he must have a income earning work he must be able to maintain his finances because What's the point of making money if you don't know how to manage? 
he must have some understanding of health. If the children or the wife fall sick, you know, he's not just going to be there and staring. He should be able to have some understanding regarding medical and health issues. He should also be responsible for their protection and their care and their feeding and so on and so forth. So sometimes in some cultures, a bright prize is to show us that you can handle the responsibility of taking on our daughter or child. You know, there are people who start families and are unable to feed their children. This is, in evolutionary terms, such children often become despondent. You know, um, they, in the animal kingdom, offsprings who don't have caretakers often die. In the human world, they become um, misgrants of society, often engaging in misdemeanors and will end up dead or in prison. They may not outrightly die, as with the animal kingdom, but the standard of living that they are given is usually poor and substandard. This is why it's important for people, especially women, who scientists have discovered to be the one we both actually create the standards. Men want women who are fertile, men want women who are young, men want women who are, and so on and so forth. And women say they want men who have financial prowess, men who are strong. This is the reason why sometimes you see tall men, short men. Short men have like a complex because everyone looks down on them. They can't do nothing, they can't reach, and so on and so forth. Men, but modern society, there are different ways where men express power, men express status, men express um, income earning abilities, and so on and so forth. It's no longer, it's it's not as pronounced, you know, they say beauty in the eye of the holder. However, we understand that there's still that subtle bias or prejudice towards fair lighter skin taller men you know buffer men more muscle prettier figure hugging and so on so even though morally or ethically we do not want to talk about or accept or acknowledge that the physical which our ancestors used um play a role in choosing a mate it's still subtly there and just like sweating you don't tell your body to sweat it just does to control the temperature that's why it's almost like men are have double standards it's like men are shallow men are too physical they're shallow this is simply playing out the evolutionary um standards for choosing a mate men are more interested in women who show um vibrancy and youth and beauty and proper hip to waist ratio i believe which is a sign that she can she's fertile and able to bear children compared to old um older women so guys there's so much that goes into choosing of a mate and marriage but i just wanted to bring some aside to it that people often don't realize is hugely at play of course there's place for love there's place for and so many other things but at the end of the day, you realize uh, a home that is built without these fundamentals often crumbles. It's like there are holes. It's almost like everything is perfect, but it's not working. Well, you see, marrying someone who has um, self-esteem issues, is it's that's not an alpha male. That is not someone who is capable of protecting. So no matter how much we try to ignore the requirements of nature, it comes back to bite us in the ash. Okay, so guys, let me know what you think, how the difficulties you've experienced and what lessons you've learned. But more importantly, remember, for many of our problems that we seem not to, we think is mystical, there's actually a scientific or biological explanation. If only we can unravel and understand that those mysteries we'd have an easier life and understanding ourselves, our environment, and our situations. Thank you for watching. Until my next video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe.